Today we're going to review Juve Red Light Therapy Devices. We'll cover the five features Red Light Therapy Devices should have according to our own review of the photobiomodulation literature. For those of you who are unaware of how Red Light Therapy works and the proven scientific health benefits of photobiomodulation, you can check out this in-depth review up here or link down below in the description. All right, let's get started with the review. We'll cover one point at a time. Number one relates to the emitted light frequency. According to the scientific literature, light frequency is one in the red spectrum at 660 nanometers and one in the near infrared spectrum at 850 nanometers have been tried and tested in many scientific studies and have been proven to have great photobiomodulatory effects on the body. Now, it's important to mention that our cells respond in pretty much the same way to both of these light frequencies. The only difference is penetration depth. Red light is absorbed by the top layers of the skin and elicits a response in those cells while near-infrared light penetrates through all the layers of the skin and gets absorbed by the underlying tissue, muscle, and even bone. In dermatology, for example, a study was conducted in which it was found that near-infrared light had the greatest effect on skin elasticity, while red light improved pigmentation and overall skin tone. However, the authors of the paper concluded that the best results could be attained by using a combination of these two wavelengths. For this reason, Juves combined these two light frequencies in nearly all its devices. So this means that you get the best of both frequencies. One band can be switched on independently during treatment, or you can use them simultaneously. The only exception is the Juve Go traveling devices we have here. They have only one band each. So deciding which traveling device to choose would depend purely on what tissues you're trying to treat. You'd want the red light one for more superficial tissues, particularly the skin, or the near-infrared one to treat deeper layers such as the muscles, joints, and brain. Obviously, as I explained earlier, all the Juve's other devices like the Juve Mini that we also tested contain both light bands, so you don't have to worry about choice if you opt for those units. Number two on the list is power density or irradiance, which refers to the number of photons of light or packets of light energy that hits a specific area at a given time. It's like the intensity of light and it's measured in milliwatts per centimeter squared. Over and above wavelength used, it is this intensity or power density that determines whether the light is capable of penetrating deep enough and imparting adequate amounts of energy to stimulate the activated cells at the required depth. A device that is not powerful enough may require an uber long exposure time to get the right dose. Moreover, insufficient power could also compromise the penetration depth and overall effectiveness of the treatment. On the other hand, a device that is too powerful could heat up the exposed cells too much and thereby traumatize them to the point that they could respond negatively. So having the correct light intensity is key. According to the leading researchers in the field of photobiomodulation, the power density or intensity of red and infrared light should be between one and 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared to have a therapeutic benefit for the exposed cells, as well as being on the safe side. However, the authors of a literature review on home use devices found that a range of between 14 and 55 milliwatts per centimeter squared was used in studies that reported beneficial results. So to test this out, I used my irradiance meter to check the power of the Juve light from both the battery powered traveling units as well as the larger panels. With a battery powered near infrared device at 10, 20 and 30 centimeter exposure distance, I recorded 55, 40 and 27 milliwatts per centimeter squared respectively. With a battery powered red light device, the measurements were 40, 28 and 17 milliwatts per centimeter squared at the same distances. Let's now compare these readings to what we got with a larger wall powered Juve mini panel. With only the near infrared turned on, we got readings of 73, 59 and 52 milliwatts per centimeter squared at the corresponding distances. And with just the red light turned on, our readings were 55, 45 and 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared at the same distances. So comparatively, the Juve Mini was about 25% more powerful than the Juve Go traveling devices. What does this mean in terms of effectiveness? Well, it means that with the Juve Mini, you can stand further away from the device and still get the same dose of light per square centimeter. The advantage of standing further away is that due to the angle of the emitted light, more surface area of the skin can be exposed during a single session, which increases the total dose of light received by the body. However, if you're targeting only specific tissues, such as the face, 
this doesn't really matter. Nevertheless, these recordings show that both versions of the Juve devices comfortably emit a light intensity that is within the range recommended by the academic photobiomodulation literature. That means they are powerful enough to penetrate through the skin and into the targeted tissues, but not so powerful that they can damage your skin or skin cells. Okay, moving on. The third factor we are going to look at is dose. Receiving the correct dose of red and infrared light per square centimeter of body tissue is the next feature of a successful photobiomodulation therapy. We call this metric energy density, which refers to the amount of light energy that has been delivered to the cells per unit area in a given time frame. Energy density is measured in joules per centimeter squared. Scientific studies on home use devices indicate that doses of between 4 and 50 joules per centimeter squared per treatment yield positive results. The only study in which a positive outcome was not found was one in which the researchers used more than 50 joules per centimeter squared in a single treatment. This is because high doses have been shown to cause too much stress to the cells, to the point where they can become damaged. Remember, a little stress on our cells is often a good thing, but of course, overdoing it is never the way to go. So spending more time in front of these lights, hoping that a bigger dose will generate better results, does not apply with red light therapy. Because photobiomodulation doesn't yield immediate, tangible results, there is sometimes a tendency to think that longer exposures are needed. However, photoactivated cells take days to weeks of regular doses to show significant changes. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, with that important message out the way, let's calculate what doses the Juve devices provided per square centimeter in their recommended treatment time of 10 minutes. To calculate this, you take the intensity of the light in milliwatts per centimeter squared and times it by the duration in seconds, which in this case of 10 minutes is 600 seconds. Then divide by 1000. The answer is given in joules per centimeter squared. So with the Juve Go near infrared device at 10 centimeter exposure distance and for 10 minutes exposure time, the dose would be 33 joules per centimeter squared. At 20 and 30 centimeters, the dose would be 24 and 16.2 joules per centimeter squared respectively. With the Juve Go red light device, the doses would be 24, 16.8 and 10.2 joules per centimeter squared at the same exposure distance and in the same time frame. The bigger Juve Mini gave us 43.8, 35.4 and 32.2 joules in the near infrared spectrum and 33, 27 and 24 joules in the red spectrum. So as you can see, 10 minutes with the Juve devices at a 10 to 30 centimeter exposure distance cannot overdose our cells with light. These readings also sit comfortably within the scientific proven effective dose of between 4 and 50 joules per centimeter squared found for home use devices. Now, it's important to mention that within this pretty broad range, depending on what you're trying to achieve from red light therapy, whether it be skin rejuvenation, muscle recovery, wound healing, sleep, or any of the other benefits of photobiomodulation, each therapeutic benefit, according to the research, requires a different exposure distance and treatment duration. So we have created a spreadsheet that shows the goal of the therapy and the corresponding exposure distances and exposure duration suggested in the literature. All these measurements are based on the Juve devices, but we also included the raw data too. So if you have a cheap irradiance meter like this, which I will link in the description, you can work out the equivalent therapy parameters regardless of the device you own. We will also be updating the spreadsheet with new data all the time. To gain access to the spreadsheet, you can subscribe to our Patreon page, which will also be linked down below. This subscription will cost you only $3 a month, the equivalent of a cup of coffee. This tiny amount will not only support us to continue providing free research-based health and fitness videos, but you will also be able to access all of our exclusive content from the past and future. All right, next on the list is treatment coverage. This refers to how much of the body is exposed to red light during the therapy. Some treatments that target the skin on the face, the brain or specific injury might not need a lot of coverage. However, more systemic treatments such as enhancing overall ATP energy production, improving sleep, stimulating weight loss or speeding up muscle recovery require a larger percentage of the body to be exposed to this light for optimal results. 
So this is how Juve sets out to accommodate these diverse needs. The company produces a wide range of red light therapy devices, ranging from battery power travel devices, such as the ones we've been testing, to full body panels meant to target the entire body. What makes Juve's product line so unique is that its larger panels have a patented modular design that enables you to slowly build your full body red light therapy device over time. So for example, let's say that you can't afford the thousands it would take for a full body panel. You could by a single panel such as the Juve Mini we tested, which is great as a standalone device, but then a few months later, you buy another one to upgrade the system to a half panel. This process can be repeated until you have a full body setup without having to spend all the money up front. Each one of these devices seamlessly fits into the other like a puzzle, making upgrading your home setup super easy. Great. Now the fifth and final characteristic that photobiomodulation devices must have is low electromagnetic field levels. In this day and age, we are inundated with electromagnetic waves due to our dependence on tech. Recently, for example, the upcoming 5G network infrastructure has created a lot of hype because of the potential health risks involved from daily exposure to these radio waves. So when you're trying to benefit from a treatment protocol such as red light therapy, it would be kind of counterproductive to blast yourself with high levels of unhealthy electromagnetic waves at the same time. So with our handy electromagnetic field meter, let's see what readings we got at a pretty normal exposure distance of 15 centimeters. We started off by getting the ambient readings, then switched on the device. As you can see, the changes were negligible, showing that these devices emit few electric and magnetic fields. Now, obviously, since we are testing the Juve Go devices, which are battery powered, rather than being powered by a wall plug, these differences were to be expected. To compare, we also tested our wall powered mini using the same protocol. Again, the results showed negligible increases in electromagnetic fields. Now, let's see how these readings compare to other appliances. First, we looked at my computer monitor. The readings increased significantly, especially the electrical field. The exact same trend was shown when we tested our studio lighting. The second test was super interesting because they are also LED light panels. So a big thumbs up to Juve on what they've done with electromagnetic fields. Okay, so a quick recap before I give my personal feedback. Juve devices emit tried and tested light frequencies of 660 and 850 nanometers. Their light intensity or power density is strong enough to provide a photobiomodulatory benefit to the body, but not strong enough to damage the skin. 10 minutes in front of a Juve device can provide a sufficient light dose to achieve a therapeutic effect. Juve's broad range of travel and modular devices can provide targeted to full body coverage. Juve devices emit low electromagnetic fields, making them safe for daily use. Okay, now for some of my personal feedback. The Juve Go and Mini devices we have been testing are extremely well made. You can tell that this is not Juve's first rodeo. The metal construction gives a nice weight to the product and makes it feel premium. The traveling devices weigh in at 582 grams each, so chucking them into your hand luggage shouldn't be an issue. The carrying cases are hardy and will definitely protect your device while carting it around. Each device comes with a high power charging brick and thick hardwearing type C cables, which charge them up pretty quickly. The battery tends to last a few days with morning and evening sessions of 10 minutes each. Obviously, there's no need to worry about charging Juve's larger panels like the Mini because they are powered straight from your wall plug. I got the metal stand for the Mini, which allowed me to set it up on a shelf in my room. While this panel is not as portable as the Go, having it conveniently set up in my room serves as a daily reminder to use it. Juving, as they call it, has now become a part of my morning routine. I've also found that 10 minutes in front of the light after waking up has given me an opportunity to think about and plan the day ahead. So I felt nice and energized as well as mentally prepared for the day after each session. This has been an unexpected benefit I've found from adding red light therapy into my morning routine. If I travel, I can maintain this morning ritual by taking the Go devices with me, which is cool. Now on the negative side, these red and infrared lights are pretty powerful and bright. It is therefore recommended to wear safety goggles or at least keep your eyes closed when exposing your face. The risk here involves the retina of the eye in which light is concentrated after entering into the pupil. So as you can see in these drawings, a 590 milliwatt per centimeter squared intensive light source entering the eye is amplified six times by the time it reaches the retina. So with daily exposure of many minutes, it is unknown what damage might be done if the correct precautions are not taken. It might also be necessary to avoid switching the device on in a dark room. Our pupils dilate to more than double their usual size in the dark in order to allow extra light to enter. So switching on a bright and powerful photobiomodulation device in the dark 
could send huge amounts of light into the eyes and potentially damage them. This issue might especially be relevant with near infrared light because it cannot be seen yet still emits intensive energy. In this case, we cannot rely on our blink reflex to close and protect the eyes if the source is too bright. So again, closed eyes or the use of protective goggles is definitely the safer route to take here. Now, many other companies provide protective eye goggles with their devices, but Juve does not. So I'll link a few pairs down below. When it comes to price, Juve devices are not cheap. They are among the more expensive home use red light devices on the market. I won't mention exact prices because they are subject to change over time, but you can follow the links provided down below to learn more. The company claims that the premium price is due to the quality of the materials it uses in the construction of its product, as well as the research and development that goes into designing them. Juve backs up these claims with a two-year warranty, which is nice. However, the two-year warranty is valid only for their larger panels, like the Mini. The Juve Go Travel devices come with only a one-year warranty. I guess this is expected because the risk of breaking them while traveling is obviously higher. Now, the Juve website is an amazing resource for education on red light therapy. All its articles are referenced with a large body of research, and they are very easy to understand. I'm glad to see that the company has put a large chunk of their time into educating people about the science of photobiomodulation. Finally, I'm glad to see that Juve devices are class 2 FDA certified for relief of muscle spasms, minor muscle and joint aches, as well as pain and stiffness associated with arthritis. So having at least some approval from the FDA gives me more confidence in their products. So let's recap my personal experience with Juve. Its devices are well constructed and robust. I like the portability of the Jugo travel devices and the fact that I can maintain my morning routine on the road. Their panels are expensive, but the wide range of options and ability to build up my setup over time with their modular design makes the price less intimidating. The two-year warranty helps in this regard. However, I was sad to see that the Go range gets only one year. It was an inconvenience to have to buy protective eye goggles, but I found that closing my eyes seemed to do the job too. The Juve website has a rich source of scientifically backed photobiomodulation research. Juve is also a company that is not scared of getting its devices tested by third parties, which gives me a level of confidence in the products it produces. All in all, Juve is one of the leaders in the red light therapy for home use space. The company has been producing these devices since 2015 and is currently in its second generation of products. I'm also looking forward to seeing what the Juve team will produce next and how they will continue to innovate in this space. If you enjoyed this review, please show us and the YouTube algorithm your appreciation by hitting the like button. We will also be reviewing more red light therapy devices in the future, as well as many other scientifically backed health products. So subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when we do. Anyway, thanks for watching and until next time, keep on exercising your health. Cheers.